with me having done some work on that software that essentially tracks the journey of a train as it goes around block by block, my attention quickly came back to these short blocks again, especially the double slips. The reason why is that the way the software works is as a new block goes active, it works out all the blocks that are connected to it. And if any of them are active, occupied, it says, okay, well, that's the back block effectively. This is the front block. So the direction is this way and, and on you go. A little bit of a problem here with the short blocks is that the detector is right in the middle, the LDR, which means the train has to be halfway through a short block before it's actually detected as active, which also means, imagine it's going a fair whack as well, that the software through the API and JMRI has to identify that this block went active before this block went active. And that's a very short space of time in which to do it. So I've been looking at ways of activating these short blocks earlier. And you don't need to have just one occupancy detector per block. You can really have as many as you like. And I did wire these uh, double slips up so that they're at least one rail is isolated. So I'm going to have a play with adding, because I've got a few spares, um, a current detector onto this short block, as well as still using the LDR, which gives me, hopefully, current detection as soon as a current detecting wheel passes onto this rail, and it gives me the occupancy detector. So if I've got a long train that's got loads of plastic wheel coaches at the backside that, that, that detect no current, the train will still activate the short block as soon as its wheels enter it but once it the, the the loco has passed over the other side and there's no more current being detected on this this double slip it will still say active because all of the plastic wheel coaches are still passing over this light dependent resistor here i've been ferreting around under the baseboard then and i've got the current detector um two of them in fact attached to two double slips um uh the, the station one and the, the station approach one. I've also done all the legwork in JMRI to add those current detectors and, and add them to the Arduino boards and everything else. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter the block occupancy settings in JMRI so that whereas now it just says if the LDR is active then this block becomes active, it's going to um, make that block occupied if the LDR is occupied active or if the current detector is active um, and it's not immediately apparent if I go down to blocks um, it's, it's kind of not immediately apparent in JMRI how to do that because if I go and find my two station blocks here uh, station double slip blocks um, sensor is singular there's there's no apparent way of adding multiple sensors to this block and in fact it's not done here at all so i'm going to get out of here and, and the, the way we enable this is to create what jmri calls an internal sensor now when i first started using jmri i kind of uh, felt like i should leave internal sensors alone and to, to me the naming isn't quite intuitive um it, it sounded like something i should leave alone because it's to do with jmri and and maybe internal to that but what it actually means is kind of a virtual sensor so it's something we can manage and manipulate um through logic and and things like that so i'm gonna add one and uh, let's give it um uh, uh, fairly high ID I guess the ID doesn't really matter and let's call this um, IS for internal sensor up deck station crossover oh crossover occupancy sensor there it is added with a fair few uh, type of mistakes and it's added and it's just there and it's dormant because it's not doing it it's just it's just a, a, a sensor a, a virtual sensor now to make that start work i mean the, the first thing i can do of course if i go down to my block now and it was the station that one i can set this to be i can remove that ldr because that ldr is no longer the single source of truth and there's my occupancy sensor 
I can set that. But still, at, at the minute, okay, that sensor's set, but that sensor's not doing anything. And the way, or one of the ways to make it start doing something is to use Logic NG. So I'm going to create a group for, because uh, there'll be multiple rules here, because there'll be multiple short blocks. Um, so let's just call it short block occupancy sensors and create that now i'm going to create a new condition and let's call this uh station crossover occupancy and create that i get a nice blank uh page so now i need to sort of think about the logic and that the logic is if uh a, a local uh goes on to that that do, uh, double slip in this case and starts um uh, drawing current and the current detector detects that that happened uh, has happened then i want the block to go occupied but also if the ldr gets activated i also want the block to go occupancy so either of those go active then i want the the, the occupancy so i'm going to add an if statement uh, i think they're in flow control if then else um and go with the defaults there um now because it's one or the other here one goes active then i, I want it to be occupied the other one goes active i want it to be occupied i'm going to turn this if statement into a an if or statement and just let that create so if so evaluate all so first of all let's go and add the first sensor and we're going to go for the LDR. Let's add that one first. IJKL and it's station crossover. And if that is active, okay, let's create that. But now it's created as another um, kind of or condition here. So I'm going to go and add another one. I'm going to go and add and the current detector sensor, which is hopefully in here as well. Um, there it is, current detector, station, double slip. And if that is active, okay. So what it's saying here is if that goes active or if that goes active, then do something. And the thing I'm going to add to do is I'm going to go find my virtual sensor uh, down there. And I'm going to set, I think I'll give it a prefix of IS. There it is, station crossover, set that to active. So this is starting to look good. If if that one goes active or that one goes active, then set the one that's actually set the block occupancy to, to active. Um, and then I want to add an else as well, because this, um, the, the, one of the windows that appeared when I first created it, the, this uh, little bit of logic here will be now be evaluated and run every time one of these two sensors change. So if that one changes, this will be run. That one changes, this will be run. So what we want to do as well, of course, is we don't want that that block, that 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 um, double slip, to stay active forever once it's been activated. So we're going to add an else statement. And again, the same item. Let's go and find the sensor. And I, S, otherwise, set it to inactive. So every time one of those two sensors changes if one of them or both of them are active then set the virtual sensor internal sensor to active if neither of them are active then set the internal sensor to inactive and i close that down let's give this a test then i've got a coach here that has no resistive wheel sets and it's just sat right in front of that double slip. And I've got a tablet here with the layout on it. And over here, I don't know if it's picking it up, it's come up a funny colour. But that's the double slip that the um, coach is about to run over. So first of all, if I run it and say just edge it onto the double slip before the LDR, let's get it to about there. Unsurprisingly, it hasn't gone active because this coach isn't drawing any current. But if I just move it over a little bit so it's covering it, we've now got a little red dot because it's a tiny little short block. 
but that is now marked as occupied and if I move the coach back along here there's a little bit of a two second timeout but there we go that's gone off so at the very least the occupancy detection is still working as it used to before I added the current detection this time let's try it with something that does draw current and over here there's a slight difference in that the um, obviously sat here in this block it's also drawing current and there's occupancy current based occupancy detection on this block so this oops this line here has gone red for active but still the double slip is marked as inactive and this time I'm just gonna move the train so it's just slightly on the double slip but nowhere near the LDR and down here we now have a little um, representation of a double slip that has gone red and if again if I move the train off we go back to inactive and everything together um, so this time I'm going to drag it all the way over there of course what should happen is as soon as the train loco starts drawing current from this block we've gone active down here but we're going to push it over and we're going to push it all the way over to the point where let's try there the loco is now off the double slip it's probably not easy to uh to demonstrate maybe it's easy from over here but the loco is now past the double slip and here we can see the block occupancy's changed because the, the loco has moved into another block but the short block the double slip is still being marked as occupied because now the coach which isn't drawing any current is sat right on top of the LDR. Now this is repeatable of course on any short block you have as many sensors as you like now you've got this kind of this this logic ng and the internal uh, sensors working um, and also it doesn't have to be a current detector involved at all another way of doing this would have been to put LDRs here 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 and here and there'd, there'd have been no need for the one in the middle anymore and depending on the, 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 the direction of the track you could maybe get away with three as well and if you said if any of those are occupied then it's pretty much going to do the same thing and you don't need current detection at, at all. Over on this double slip this one um, does uh, demonstrate how there is a bit of a, a drawback with current detectors certainly with the single line current detectors on this double slip it's this rail over here that's got the current detector on it but what that means of course is as a current detecting loco comes onto the double slip here this rail isn't um doesn't have an occupancy sensor on it and this is the frog this is powered independently so actually with a couple of wheels on this wouldn't go occupied at all it would have to get to about the the, the current detecting loco would have to get to about here where there's a connection then between this rail and that one so in some circumstances actually current detectors are possibly not the right tool for the job with these double slips if you want occupancy as soon as uh, a loco gets near it might be more viable to use the kind of in in this case I could get away with three LDRs because this is a clockwise line so trains are only ever going to enter this um, this double slip from this line this line or this line if they're crossing over that way they're never going to go anti-clockwise so I wouldn't need to put an LDR there and I'd get away with three and it's not just double slips that this would come in handy with I, I mentioned this in a video a long time ago but sometimes it's easy to get caught out with what my shortest block is for example the, the middle of these three lines here the block starts roughly down where that um, signal is I think maybe maybe the end of the the frog of that that turn out there and it runs all the way down there to the corner and probably around where, where one of those breaks in the track is that's you know a, a fairly normal sized block for this layout however if a train is coming down from the incline which is the sort of leftmost line looking at it there it will come into this this middle block on that turnout but if it's going to the anti-clockwise line it will leave this block on that turnout 
which makes this my shortest block. So again, you know, I, okay, if I've got resistive wheel set on each coach, I'm still going to catch that. Um, but that's about the limit of it. I'd need one on each coach. So the other option again would be to have maybe a couple of tactically placed LDRs, one uh, down here and one towards the end, which also um, detect presence just by being covered up. And that would certainly help uh, with the, the block occupancy there. So I think doubling up on sensors on short blocks is probably a good idea. It certainly makes everything robust. And the reason why I'd need things to be more robust is once um, again, once I get into automation say this this little train here i've been testing with wants to go in reverse and it's okay it's a bit close but it's queuing up to get across this double slip but it can't get across this double slip because another train a big long train is going to come round that corner and it's going to cross this double slip this way head anti-clockwise into the station under automation rules this will be sat waiting until this double slip becomes unoccupied Problem, of course, is if this has only got, say, a current detector on it and there's big gaps between resistive wheel sets on the coaches, then there might be a case where as two coaches in the middle of the train cross this and they don't have um, any resistive wheel sets on them, this goes unoccupied. And as soon as this goes unoccupied, automation says, brilliant, this is free. I'm going to change these these." Um, turnouts in favour of this train even though there's a great big long train going over it already so what I end up with of course is derailments here because this train hadn't finished crossing and then this train will crash into the, the derailed coaches.